Hi everyone, welcome back. So today we are going to start with the second skill that is configure financials. Okay, we are following the skill based on the skill we are learning MB800. Where is the skill? Here is the skill. Okay, so setting up the core functionality we have completed and then we are now into financial management. We will be understanding sales, purchase, inventory and more other things which are comes under the migrating to data. So these things which I have discussed in the very first um, video. So if you just go here, like go to my channel here, you can find you have uh, how to pass MB800 exam. So if you just click on the full playlist, you can find that here exam overview, the functional consultant, like what is this and what is the certification guide and how we are going to proceed. So we have completed the first skill set that is setting up business central set up business central that we have completed these four learning path with us, these modules we have covered along with the exercise. Now we are into the configure business central. In this, we have four learning path again, like set up financial management, use journal, reconcile bank account and process customer and vendor payment. In the first learning path that is a set of financial, we have these much module. OK, we have nearly five modules to cover. So these are the five modules to cover the five modules. It took it will take nearly four hour, 23 minutes. But before entering into the finance module, I would recommend to understand what are the key terms and terminologies because most of the people who are here, they don't know what is finance and what are the key terms involved in finance. OK, so we will first understand that and then we will move on to the further topics. So the first most important thing is what general ledger. OK, so general ledger is what the heart of financial management in business central not only in business central any finance if you take general ledger plays an important role so it records all the company's financial transactions like asset liability income and expenses using debit and credit entries for example when a sales invoice of 550000 is posted in debit it will be like account receivable and in credit it is like a sales revenue 550000 so who will be recording this? That is what important. So either a financial manager, um, but the transaction flow in automatically when the invoice journals or payments are posted. OK, whenever an invoice or anything is posted. So this general ledger will be automatically updated. Basic um, basic responsibility of handling this general ledger is for the finance manager or accountant. OK. So I'll also show you like where to go and search for general ledger here. We are discussing the key important terms and terminology. So if you just go ahead to this tell me icon and if you search for general ledger. OK, so you can see general journal OK and general ledger entries. You can find it here. OK, so this is a report of the general ledger. Apart from this, you can also see that if you just go and type G bar L, you can find the general ledger. Account mapping and everything. OK, register general ledger register. Fine. OK, you can see here that it is an invoice posted. OK, so you can find all these things. General journal default purchase everything here. OK, this is what the general ledger. So next comes the general ledger configuration. Configuration defines how your financial system works like accounting period open when it is like open and when it is closed. Allowable posting date. What are the allowable posting dates you are available, uh, which you are de describing currency setup VAT and GST setup. All these things comes under your general ledger configuration. So for example, locking January once books are closed, so no one can post back end entries. So who will be handling this is what the finance man manager or the system admin. The major thing I'm not talking about who will be posting it in the business central. The general responsibility who holds this is what these people and uh, you can see here ledger general ledger configuration. I'm not sure whether it is available for me. OK, general ledger entries. Yeah, you have all the general ledger set up. OK. So allow posting from allow posting to allow deferral posting and all these things. OK, you can find it here. Next comes your number series A number series automatically assigns unique IDs to a document and transactions. 
This ensures the traceability and prevents duplication. For example, if it is a sales invoice, let us take S stands for sales, like a number series if you take, you know, it is a S stands for sales and INV stands for invoice and 001 S stands for the number, the first sales invoice. So this is what the number series. So again, if you just go ahead and search for number uh, series, you can find number series here. Okay, and if you just click on that number series, you can find like this is what starting if it is an assembly blanket order, it will be starting the number and this is the ending number. Okay, if you just go ahead and search for the sales CR sales invoice. Okay, so sales invoice. So this is the number series, which is recommended number series. Okay. So this is what the number series. Next comes your so score that is a trial. What is this? Every transaction is tagged with the source code to show where it originated. This helps in auditing. So for example, sales. Sale means sales. Purchase means P-U-R-C-H. P-A-Y-M means payment. Okay, so who will be recording this? This will be like system auto assigns this and configured by the account or admin. Okay, so this is what the trial or source code. Uh, hopefully, okay, so hopefully, yeah, the trial source balance, okay, it's not, okay, the next comes your um, posting groups, okay, this is an another important thing, posting groups are rules that connect transaction from sub ledgers, like if you take customer, vendor, item to the general ledger. Okay, the posting groups that are types of posting groups you have like a customer posting group, which links the customers to the receivable account, vendor posting group, inventory posting group, general posting group. Okay, so example, you can say like customer who is a domestic who posts the sales to domestic sales revenue account. So if you just go ahead and search for the posting groups here. So you can find the posting. Posting groups, okay, so vendor posting groups, project posting groups, you have everything. Okay, customer posting group. Okay, so this is what posting groups. Next comes um, your dimension. Dimensions are like a tax. You add to a transactions for reporting. They allow analysis by department, cost center, project, region, etc. For example, rent expense posted with dimension department is equal to HR later reports can show expenses by the department like it is like you can think about a labeling or tagging something okay so these are the dimensions we will be learning all these things in detail okay so dimension if you see you can see that this is a dimension so you will be giving the area code area filter and everything for this okay so you can find it here in the dimension Got it. So we'll be learning everything. So if you just take this, you know, you will be learning what is a general ledger configuration, dimension, posting, everything. So when I'm when we are into the module, you should be able to easily understand it. So that's why I'm just giving you the overview of financial terms. Next comes the chart of accounts. So chart of accounts, COA, we will call it in, in a, a short form as a structured list of all accounts, assets, liabilities, income, expenses and everything. Each account has a number and description. If you just go ahead and again search for COA or chart of accounts, you can find it here. So this is a detailed thing like it has all the assets. You can see there is an asset. You can also find there is a liability. Okay, everything you can find it here. So you can find that uh, this is the bank account. Okay, so if you see balance sheet, this is your asset. If you click here, you can see more about this one. What is the number? What is the name? Development expenditure. How? What does that expenditure goes? Where does it goes? On all these things. So this is about chart of account, and usually finance manager designs it, an accountant maintains it. But still, here in uh, in business central, everything happens, you know, like chart of accounts, you will, you will be like adding it. Next comes your general journal. It's a journal. Journal is like a worksheet for entering posting financial transaction. For example, general journal, recurring journal. General journal is for flexible for adjustment and entries. 
recurring journal for periodic entries like my payment journal cash receipt journal everything so recording a prepaid rent adjustment it debit the rent ex expense and credit the prepaid rent okay so who will be recording this an accountant will be recording this maybe like account receivable and account payable clerks will be managing this so if you just go and generally search for journal you can see there are lost lot of journals uh, available here cost journal item journal sales journal payment everything <clears throat> okay so next comes your journal templates and batches like this defines the journal type what is the type of the journal like the general journal or recurring journal etc a batch is what a subfolder or, or to a group entries like monthly accruals or bank or pay, bank payments or something okay so example like general is what the general uh, ge uh, general journal and batch is a monthly accrual monthly the batch has to be executed like that okay so <clears throat> this is about the journal batches okay journal template so you can just go ahead and search for the journal template you can find the template for item journal you can find the journal uh, templates for the cost journal project journal and everything here okay so next comes your journal entries okay you will be hearing these words so every debit credit record created through a journal every debit credit record will be created through the journal okay so for example debit utilize expense that is rupees 15000 or 20000 whereas the credit bank you are crediting that to the bank okay who will be recording this accountant <clears throat> next comes your periodic recurring journal okay so what is this periodic recurring journal so here you can see that <clears throat> so a periodic uh, or a recurring journal okay is a recurring journal uh, is in business central which is used to post transactions with repeat that repeat regularly like a rent you can a rent will be like periodic and it is a recurring journal a recurring entry right recurring cost so salary depreciation or accruals instead of entering the same entry every month the system will let you to set up set it up once and automatically generate entries for the future periods so think of it like a standing order why you should use this if you want to save time for repetitive transaction or if you want to ensure that accuracy is good and provides a consistency in posting and support accrual based accounting so you can just go ahead and search for recurring recurring journal okay recurring item journal or recurring purchase line so what is again and again repeating every month or every week or something you can just plan for that <clears throat> okay this is what recurring thing <clears throat> next comes your bank reconciliation the process of matching system balances with the actual bank is what bank reconciliation okay so it is like you are matching a system record with the bank statement it is a process of comparing the balance in your company's bank account in business central with the actual bank statement so the main goal is to ensure that all deposit withdrawals bank charges and interest are recorded correctly any missing or duplicate transactions are identified like you can simply put it like it confirms that what you think is in the bank is equal to what's actually in the bank okay why it is important the bank reconciliation why it is really important because it detect errors and the omission identifies the bank charges prevents the fraud and unauthorized transaction and ensures accurate financial reporting so this is really important okay and next comes your um, payment reconciliation journal so what is this payment reconciliation journal again is to auto match bank statement lines with the entries okay which is used to import bank statement lines and match them directly to the open customer vendor entries in the business central think of it like a tool to clear customer vendor invoicing using the actual payment received or made based on your bank statement so it is a transaction level matching unlike bank reconciliation which is a balance level 
okay so you can think about like if you the key steps usually involve is what you'll be importing the bank statement and um, uh, you'll be automatically matching it okay so this is what all about the payment reconciliation next comes the cash management so cash management is like you should manage the liquidity and the bank accounts so you should have the control over the liquidity and the bank accounts so this is basically handled by the finance manager and you will be like managing multiple banks in the bc you can manage multiple banks in the bc so let us just search for the cash management here okay so i think okay so we can um it's a general term okay cash flow setup okay so it's a general thing uh, which we usually uh, every finance person should know everyone who is doing the finance they should understand what is this cash management okay and next comes your cash receipt journal so what is this cash receipt journal this is another important part of the thing which is a journal for recording customer payment whatever the cash you are receiving it from your customer so you will be recording the money received from the customers so if the customer pays 25000 against the invoice which will be debit bank and credit the customer receivables so who will be recording it an uh, account receivable clerk or a cashier will be recording this next comes your payment journal so the payment journal is what recording your vendor like journal for recording vendor payment what you are paying it to your vendor that things will be recorded in the payment journal so if you are paying a vendor b 50000 via a bank transfer so how it will be like paying your vendor debit your vendor payable and credit your bank okay so who will be recording this again account payable clerk or the accountant next comes suggest vendor payments so this is an another one the system automatically list vendor invoices due for payment based okay so this will be um, the system will automatically list vendor invoices which are due okay and the bc list of vendor x invoice due like what are the invoice dues are there okay this is also handled by the ap clerk the last one is check management so functionality to pay vendors via printed checks check i'm talking about the check or electronic check formats so this is like printing a check for a vendor 15000 rupees 15000 or 20000 whatever it may be so this two handled by the accounts payable clerk or the accountant this should be managed by them but it based on their finance statement so you can see that all these topics are here we'll be learning what is a general ledger configuration uh, what is the introduction what is a general fast tab dimension fast tab everything and then number series and trial codes what all these things are and then we'll be understanding the posting groups and we'll be understanding the dimensions set up chart of accounts as well okay so we'll be learning all these things and from the next video so stay tuned if you have any questions you can post it and if you have missed the previous videos go ahead and watch it here thank you take care bye bye have a great day